Would you like to learn how to make more bacteria and quite possibly better bacteria? <laughs> well, here we go. It's me, Moser. And after this video, you should be able to describe the process that bacteria use to reproduce, explain what mistakes or errors can happen in this process, and explain how these errors can actually change bacteria, as well as being able to describe how those changes can sometimes make bacteria harder to kill. You should already have some knowledge of the basic structure of bacteria. All right, let's go. Remember we talked about bacterial populations last time? That'd be all the bacteria of the same species that are living in one particular place. And that place could be your gut, a tub of yogurt, your dog's water dish, the bark of a tree, a lump of soil. But the population is all of those individuals from that one species that are living in the same place. Okay. We said that in order for the population to thrive, individuals, well, first of all, have to survive. So they have to maintain the correct temperature and water balance, all that stuff. But they also have to reproduce if this population is going to survive and thrive. The process that bacteria use to reproduce is an asexual process called binary fission. Now, you should remember that the prefix bi means two, and the word fission means splitting. So we're literally talking about a process where one bacterial cell splits into two. Hence why it's asexual. No mama and daddy, just mama. Binary fission is a pretty simple process. It's four steps. Copy, move, pinch, ta-da! Oh, maybe we need a little bit more detail than that. Okay. In step one, bacteria copy, or the technical term is replicate, their DNA. This includes that one big fat piece of DNA that we call the bacterial chromosome. It also includes the smaller chunks of DNA called plasmids, which exist outside the bacterial chromosome. Anyway, in the first step, it all gets copied. Then that DNA and the plasmids and the little ribosomes and everything else all moves to opposite ends of the cell, kind of like you go to your room, you go to your room. Okay, we're all separated. Good. Step three is really interesting because the cell membrane, the cell wall, and the capsule all begin to squeeze together in the middle, pinching the cell in half. They divide the cytoplasm this way. The technical name for this step is cytokinesis, but you don't have to worry about that just yet. Step four is two new daughter cells. Well, I mean, we might have to regrow a flagella or something, but these two new daughter cells should be identical to the mother cell that divided to create them. Huh, they should be identical. Well, are they always? Let's talk a little bit more about what gets copied or replicated before a cell divides. That's right. I mean that DNA, that big, long chain of, of what? Well, DNA is actually a really long molecule, and it looks like a ladder that somebody twisted. So it's got rungs going between the sides of the ladder, and it's an incredibly long molecule. But it's even more complicated than that. While on a ladder, the rungs are all identical, in DNA, those rungs are actually made of a whole bunch, well, okay, only four, four chemical pieces. But those chemical pieces only fit together in a very particular way, and that's what makes up the rung of the ladder. In bacteria, that long ladder molecule has been twisted into a circle, so I like to think of it as like a little DNA bracelet. That's what gets copied. Ooh. So every single little chemical piece of a rung has to be copied perfectly, absolutely perfectly, if we're going to have an identical daughter cell. Because remember, DNA is the stuff that, well, it has all the instructions for building that cell, for building the cell membrane and the cell wall, for building the capsule, for making proteins, everything. It's all contained in that beautiful little chemical bracelet. Hmm. 
Have you ever had to copy something? Have you ever had to hand copy a long note or letter or anything out of a book? Huh. Did you ever make a mistake when you were copying? <laughs> Oops. Well, mistakes happen. It's pretty common. When a mistake happens while replicating DNA, we call that a mutation, and it causes a change in the DNA. You can see that in this second cell, there's a little section of that DNA that isn't exactly like the mother cell that it came from. Now, does that change matter? Well, it depends. Changes in DNA can, but they don't always, cause changes in the physical characteristics of a living thing because, remember, DNA is actually the instructions for building that living thing. Whether that living thing is you, a maple tree, a bacteria, a blue whale, an elephant, a daffodil, a dandelion, a piece of grass, did I mention zucchini? Any of those things, any of those living things, the physical characteristics of their bodies come from their DNA. So yeah, change in DNA, well, it can cause a physical change in the characteristics of that living thing. But does it? Well, not always. Sometimes, yeah, it might. We might have a, a bacteria that forgets to grow a flagella because the instructions for how to grow a flagella just didn't come along with its DNA based on a mistake. We might have a bacteria that has a thinner than normal or non-existent cell wall. That wouldn't be good. That cell wall gives it structure and support as well as some protection. Or we might have a bacteria that had a thicker than usual cell wall or a different chemical in its bacterial capsule, that outermost layer. Hmm. So what would these changes mean for a bacteria? Well, a bacteria with no flagellum can't move through the body of its host or through water in the environment. It might be easier for something that eats bacteria to capture. This bacteria might be a whole lot easier to kill. From the bacteria's perspective, this would definitely be a harmful mutation. Ooh, no good. Well, what about our second bacteria here, the one that has the almost non-existent cell wall and a very thin cell membrane? We can hardly see any structure there. So that's a bacteria that might be punctured more easily by chemicals in the environment. Maybe it's not as resistant to heat. Again, from the bacteria's perspective, this is not a good thing. But what about our third bacteria? So we said that it's got maybe a thicker cell wall and a slightly different chemical makeup in its capsule. Ooh, that might make it harder for things that want to eat it to find it. Huh, this bacteria might actually be Bigger, better, stronger, tougher, harder to kill. Huh. From the bacteria's perspective, this particular mutation might be really beneficial. Because, yeah, while some mutations have no effect on an organism's physical characteristics, some mutations make that organism less strong, less hardy, easier to kill. And some mutations actually can make an organism bigger, better, stronger, tougher to kill. But when it comes to bacteria, those mutations in DNA aren't even the whole picture. Remember the plasmids, the little extra pieces of DNA the bacteria have? They're outside the bacterial chromosome, which, if that's a bracelet, I guess these are like little rings of bacteria. Well, bacteria can connect using those little things that look like fuzz on their outside, and they can trade plasmids. That's right make an extra copy of their plasmid, and give it to another bacteria. What this means is that you can have a bacteria, even if they're different species, that has taken a plasmid from another bacteria and now has some other characteristic. Sometimes these other characteristics that are transmitted by plasmids, huh, sometimes it makes them really hard to kill. That's awesome from the bacteria's perspective. I'm not so sure how we feel about it. Okay, can you describe the process bacteria use to reproduce? Can you explain where mistakes can happen in that process? And how those errors can change bacteria? And can you describe how changes could make bacteria harder to kill? Good. On with ya.